Hey everybody out there. I had planned to do a video on the thievery of the money over in Cyprus and how that trend by the banksters and the Rothschilds could go elsewhere but we've had some things of a serious nature crop up with the Boston Marathon bombing and then they days after the shootout with the police and stuff so there's all kinds of different things being said I'm gonna bring you some Deb Cafile has an article on it about the uh, brothers and how they could have been double agents though so, Deb Cafile's intelligence sources say that the brothers were double agents hired by the US and the Saudi intelligence to penetrate the Wahhabi jihadist networks which were helped by the Saudi financial institutions spreading across the Russian Caucasian. The two brothers supposedly betrayed their mission and secretly went over to Islamic networks. And they supposedly, according to this article, earned the distinction of being the first terrorist operatives to import Al-Qaeda to the U.S. through a route outside the Middle East, the Caucasus. And this region encompasses the autonomous or semi-autonomous Muslim republics of Tajikistan, Ingrisia, Kabardino, Balkaria, Chechnya, North Ossetia and Karachivo, Cherkizia, which the West has not heard of, supposedly. The Saudis feared their involvement in the Caucasus would come to light when a Saudi student was questioned about his involvement in the bombing attacks while in a hospital with burned hands. Concerned enough to send Saudi Foreign Minister Prince Saudi Al Faisal to Washington on the 17th of Wednesday in the middle of the bombing crisis for a private conversation with Obama and Security Advisor Tom Donilon on how to handle the angle of the attack. The same day the Saudi media launched a three-day media campaign. National and religious figures stood up and maintained that Authentic Saudi Wahhabism does not expose, espouse any form of terrorism or suicide jihadism, and that the national Saudi religion had nothing to do with the violence in Boston. Okay. <clears throat> the two brothers' recruitment by U.S. intelligence as penetration agents against terrorist networks in southern Russia explains some otherwise strange and baffling features which is uh, an elite American college in Cambridge admitted the younger one granting $2,500 in scholarship but he didn't have to do the you know didn't get subjected to the stiff standard conditions of admission 2011 a foreign government asked the FBI to screen Tamerlan for suspected ties to Caucasian Wahhabist cells during a period in which they had begun pledging allegiance to Al Qaeda. The agency it revealed found nothing incriminating against him and let him go after a short interview. Not placed under surveillance, neither any attempt to hide the fact that he paid a long visit to Russia last year and then on his return began promoting radical Islam on social media. Even after the marathon bombings, when the enforcement, law enforcement was heavily reinforced by state and federal personnel hunting for perpetrators, Tamerlan was never mentioned as a suspect. Friday, four days after the explosions, they released footage of the two suspects walking away from the crime scene. And we now know that they knew exactly who they were. They already had their pictures and stuff. They'd already been being watched. They'd been investigated by FBI for five years, you know, at least. 
so they had their pictures on file so this is a nice little article and you also have the uh, younger one in the hospital and they're using uh, their special little law to where he's not going to get his Miranda rights and they can question him without the Miranda rights these are some of the questions that the Debka file say should be uh, asked what date did they turn decide to work for the Wahibi Network then they round up recruits for those networks in the US what was the purpose of the marathon bombings any MIT ordeal or any more attacks in the works in American cities and then you have um, this article here this is from the blaze and apparently on Monday, Glenn Beck is uh, really holding a little something out. He's supposedly going to come on Monday and uh, blow the lid off some of this stuff from things that he supposedly has found out. So you can come over to theblaze.com and check that out. But this is Nepal. Napolitano and uh, she's you know been answering questions about this stuff and you got the representative uh, from South Carolina Jeff Duncan and she refuses to answer you know she says uh, would you agree that it's negligent for us as an American administration to deport someone who was reportedly at the scene of the bombing and we're going to deport him and I'm going to get to the de deportation and she's not going to answer the question so full of misstatements and apprehend misapprehensions that it's not worthy of an answer so much reported on that that's been wrong and I can't even begin to tell you well you just said you wouldn't tell him you wouldn't give him an answer so then you go back into the original uh, after the bombing and they announced that they had a, a suspect you want to check him out Saudi National and then a little bit after that you go in and you find out that this guy's in the hospital and then you, and then you can read a, a news site from the Saudis that reports that Michelle Obama wife of American president visited the Saudis in the hospital who were injured in the bombing Nura al Ajaji underwent surgery to repair injuries of thigh area just above the knee okay so you got his wife going to the hospital apparently visiting the supposed Saudi national who was a person of interest who later on it's announced um, that he's going to get deported and on Debka file you have another article about the of course this was recent after that but this gives more about the Saudi in question they honed in on three of them <clears throat> and they shared a flat in, in Revere Massachusetts and this one that I just talked about was hospitalized with supposedly burned hands and then I guess he had some injuries above the knees one of his flatmates taken into custody over visa problems the third is on the run 
They hail from a prominent Saudi family. Okay. The origin of Saudi cell, if confirmed, strongly suggests Al Qaeda of Arabia succeeded in planting a cell. Come down and read some more. Tuesday, witnesses and photos by the spectators said they were seeking two wanted men. And he had a second guy on a rooftop. He got all kinds of things mixed in here. It's going to take a long time for us to get to the bottom of this actually. Kind of like a 911 deal. But it'll, it'll all come up. And you over here at the Universal Seduction, Abdul Raham Al Ali Al Harbi. This is the Saudi national and the initial person of interest, and he is being deported. Okay, so Napolitano said that uh, she wouldn't talk about it. Assertions that he's free and clear of terrorist ties when in fact there were ten names, ten names from his clan are linked to Al-Qaeda. Eighty-five terrorists listed by the Saudi government shows several of Al Harbi clan to have been active fighters in Al Qaeda. Then you got some of them in Gitmo. It just goes on and on and on. Is this a false flag? Why is he being deported? Deported, I mean. If he's done nothing wrong, if he's not dangerous. Hmm. Interesting. There's a lot of information to go over. There's more to this than meets the eye. <clears throat> but I do not believe it was just two guys decided to plant some bombs and kill some people. And I do believe that the two that are in the news media, one dead, one in the hospital, they knew those guys. That's a matter of fact. They had their pictures on file. That's a matter of fact. They investigated them in 2011, or at least the older one. That's a matter of fact. So they pumped it out. Who are these guys? You know, we're looking for these guys. We're not sure who these guys are. That should be a dead tip off to us. Something's up here, folks. I urge all of you to do some research and try and understand and find out more information of what has actually happened, what is actually going on, where is this going to lead. Because it's a spider web and they're going to get everything so twisted up it's going to be hard to untwist it and get to the truth. I hope all of you are well. Do the best you can. May God bless every one of us and keep us safe. I'll talk to you soon.